Hey guys, it's the War Hips here, coming at you with another painting tutorial. And today we're painting Sergeant Ripper Jackson. And I'm really excited to do this one. She is an absolute badass Katachan model. It's really cool. So, given that she is a Katachan model, what we are going to start with is we are going to start with the dark green fatigues. Now, this is her outer jacket and her trousers. And the colour that we're going to start with is orc flesh. And what we want to do is we want to grab some on the brush. We just want to start picking out all of these areas. Just as a quick side note, the model is primed with wraith bone, and the reason for this is that we want her to be quite warm because there's a lot of flesh tones going on here, and we want the jungle tones and the green tones to be quite warm. Just makes it feel like it's a little bit more camouflaged, as it were. So we're just using this orc flesh like this. Just being a little bit careful not to get it on everywhere else, but if you do, you can always neaten it back up with a bit of wraith bone. And with that orc flesh applied, we've now got a really bright, vibrant green, which is not quite what we want. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some dark angels green. And what will happen here is we don't wanna use very loads. Very loads, we don't even wanna use very much, or we don't wanna use loads. And what we wanna do we now want to just paint this Dark Angel's green over the top of that Orc Flesh. And the reason we're not using loads is because we effectively, we don't want to drown the model in the Dark Angel's green. But what the Dark Angel's green over the top of Orc Flesh gives you is just this really, really nice kind of muted green, like this. As you can see, it's already starting to give us this lovely kind of camo tone. What we can also do is when we're applying this to areas like this armband, whenever we've got really sharp edges, is we can just apply this Dark Angel's green to the flat whilst leaving the edge shining through to supply us with our first edge highlight. And with that done, we've now got a really nice dark green that we can work from. So the color that we're gonna use first is we're gonna use some Lauren Forest. And what we wanna do with this is we effectively wanna now layer up in quite a large way. Is we wanna layer up these fatigues once again. So we just wanna avoid the recesses but we also want to like areas on the flat of the leg up here just want to coat this lauren forest all over like this and with that lauren forest applied what we're now going to do is we're going to apply some highlights and the color that we're going to use is some strachan green this is our first highlight we want to use this on all the sharpest edges on these fatigues like this. Once we've got all of these greens working together, it'll start to look really cool. And with that Strachan green applied, we're now just going to take a teeny tiny little bit of Nurgling green and we're going to use this on the sharpest edges, just on the corners, where we want the light to catch. Like that. And with that done, the green fatigues are now finished. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna move on. I'm gonna grab some Plague Bearer Flesh and we're gonna use this for her shirt here. Now we don't wanna use loads. We effectively just wanna stain this section with this color. We want it to be a really pale green. like that. So we're using a tiny mount and we're just using the tip of our brush 
where possible. Just get a nice smooth pale green colour on the vest. And with that done, we're now going to grab some Militarum Green and we're going to use this on the front of that prosthetic leg. We want a nice smooth coat here, so we don't want to use loads, that's actually too much on the brush. We just want to make contact at this recess and just start pulling it down in big broad brush strokes like this. Don't worry if you get any of this Militarum Green on the kind of mechanical workings of the leg because we are going to cover over that with a metallic so it doesn't matter too much if we get any contrast on it. And next up with that Militarum Green applied, what we want to do is we want to take a teeny tiny amount of Creed Camo, not a lot, and we want to use this to apply a little bit of a recess shade to that Plague Bearer flesh. So along there, and around the hem. Of the vest. Like so, just apply a bit of shadow, a bit of shading. You also want to use a small amount of this crude camo just around the inside edge here of the neck of the shirt and around the edge of the bandolier belt type thing. What we also want to do is we want to use this Creed Camo. Use a little bit more of it this time. I'm going to use this to just coat over the majority of this leg, like this, just leaving that edge. And with that done, all the greens are now finished. So what we're going to do is going to use this as a good opportunity to just neaten up any of the mistakes that we've made using some thin down wraith bone. As you can see, I've got a blob of green there on the arm, which I definitely don't want. I'm just being very careful. To neaten it back up. Like this. You just want to go around and just find any blobs you may have made. You may have made no blobs, in which case you're awesome. But if you're like me, and you've made some blobs, now would be a really good time to correct them. And with all of our mistakes corrected, as you can see, the main one for me was that strap, strapping going around that leg. But with all of that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to paint in all the black details. And these include areas like the boots, the weapon casings, and her belt. So what we're going to do is we're going to use some black Templar. And we're just going to start coating this black Templar. That's too much to use at once all over these details. And with that Black Templar applied, what we're going to do, before we highlight it, is we're actually just going to start painting in a few of the rest of the base colours. And so the first colour we're going to use is Wildwood. We're going to use this for all of the leather details, so all of the straps, this little pouch here on the back. We want to use it for the chainsaw holder, the leather holster. And we also want to use this wildwood for her hair. And with that wildwood applied, the next thing we're going to do is 
we're going to grab some thinned down iron warriors i'm going to use this for all of the silver metallic details and so this is areas like the foot the bionic foot i should say we want the chainsaw blade and the guard on the hilt the metal areas of the bolt gun her belt buckles, so put one here and the one there on the chest. And we want to cover over any of these little connectors on any of the other straps with this Iron Warriors as well. And with all that Iron Warriors applied, what we want to do is we want to take a small amount of Retributor armor. And we want to use this to paint in all of the eagles. So we've got one here on the knee pad. We've got one on the belt buckle. And we've got one on the chainsaw on the back. And we've also got this one up here on the bolt gun, as well as the skull that is on the other side. And with all of that done, we're now gonna shade all of those metallics, including the gold and silver with some basilicanum gray. So we just wanna be really careful around there on the leg. We also want to be quite careful here on the belt buckle because we don't want to get this basilicanum gray all over that stomach. With that basilicanum gray applied, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some skeleton hoard. I'm going to use this along the kind of, I guess you call it decorative strip along here. Like this. And next up with that skeleton hoard applied, what we're going to do is we're going to use some Blood Angels Red. And we're going to use this on the grip of the chainsaw here. And we're also going to use it on her bandana. Just want to finish off the grip before we move on because we don't want a Nasty Blood Angels red line appearing halfway around the grip. That would be a no-no. Like and then similarly on the bandana as well. And with that Blood Angels red applied, what we now want to do is we want to finish in our last base coat, at least for the character herself, and that is going to be for all the skin. And the colour that we're going to use is Gilliman Flesh. And we want to get this all over all of her flesh. So we're just going to start down here. And what we're going to do is we're going to make contact with the model over here, and we're just going to pull the Gilliman Flesh all the way around, being really careful around that vest. Make sure you really work it in there and on the side of her, I guess, of her waist. Like that. And then we just want to follow this exam example around all of the flesh. So doing this all over the hand. And with all that Gilliman flesh applied, well, the model's looking very nearly done. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do some highlights, and we're basically going to go in reverse order. So we're going to start with the with the with the flesh, and the color that we're going to use is flayed one flesh. What we want to do is we basically want to pick out all the sharp features on her face, like this, as well as running a small amount of it around each of the muscles.
on her arms and her stomach like this you can see just provide a little bit of variation and with that flayed one flesh applied what we now want to do is want to take a small amount of wraith bone and we want to use this to color in the whites of her eyes and also her teeth Like that. And with that wraith bone applied, what we want to do is we want to take a small amount of black templar, just a dot, to just paint in the pupils. Of her eyes. And with that done, what we want to do is we want to take a small amount of lupus pink. And we're going to use this to colour in her tongue like this like that what you can also do is take a really small amount of a lupus pink and then just in some of these scars add a small amount of it just running down the middle of the recess uh, just to make it look a little bit raw and next up what we want to do now is we want to highlight all of that silver with some iron hand steel And once all that iron hand steel has been applied, what we're going to do is we're going to take some Liberator Gold and we're going to use this to highlight all of the gold. And with those gold highlights applied, what we're going to do is we're going to use some Carrick Stone. We're going to use this to highlight all of that wildwood. And with all that Carrack stone applied, what we want to do is we want to take some Administratum Grey. And we want to use that to just gently highlight effectively the top edges of all of that black. So on the gun, kind of looks a little bit like that. And up here on the chainsaw, we want to do this bit up here. We don't want to do all of it because the Black Templar has done a lot of work for us. So we just want to be very subtle with our administratum gray, administratum gray highlights. And next up, we're going to take some Fire Dragon Bright. I'm going to use this around the tops of the kind of bits of the grip. Like that. Just to show the light catching off the grip a bit. And we also want to use this on the corners of the folds on the bandana. So again, not a highlight all over, just in certain spots. Like that. And with that Fire Dragon Bright applied to that red, what we're going to do now is we're going to use a small amount of Cycle Brown. Not very much. Just a teeny tiny bit. I'm going to use this to apply a little bit of writing down the chainsaw. Just going to do these really small little lines to represent the text. Going down.
And with that done, Ripper Jackson is pretty much finished. What we're going to do now is just for a bit of fun, is we're going to use a bit of Karak stone. I'm going to use this to paint in some camouflage lines. And all you want to do is you basically want to use a very small amount and just in random places, you want to draw a wavy line going like this. And then you kind of want to add a little extra bit of line like that. Just want to sharpen that out a little bit. So it's less blobby. Right, all right, and we just want to randomly place these around the model. And with that done, we want to similarly do a very similar thing. Similarly do. <laughs> we want to do a very similar thing with some Corvus Black. Like that, just in between. So we get that green, black and khaki camo. And so with Sergeant Ripper Jackson all finished, we're now gonna focus on her base. Uh, and the color that we're gonna start with is Wildwood. And we're gonna be using this for all of the soil, all of the jungle floor. Now, this is a little bit tricky because it's there's so much detail all over this base. We just want to be very careful as we pick our way around. So just keep an eye out for things. There's areas like that skull there that we want to avoid. We also want to avoid the big snapping plant. With this wildwood. So you just want to take our time and go around picking it out like this. And with that wildwood all applied to the base, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some shayish purple and we're going to use this for the flap of the carapace of the tyranid that she's standing on. You just want to use it on here. I'm going to use it on the rest of the corpse, <laughs> is the word I was searching for. I'm going to use it on the rest of the hard, basically it's on the hard carapace. That would have been an easier thing to say now, wouldn't it? And with that shayish purple applied, what we're going to do is we're going to grab some volupus pink. And we want to use this across the sharp talons here and also along the main body. We don't want to use this on the tendrils on the ground. We want those to be a slightly different colour. So you just want to get this volupus pink all over like this. And then we'll come back. And then with that done, we're now going to use some Magos Purple. And it's going to be for those tentacles under here that trail out around across the ground like that and we can be pretty liberal with this and it doesn't matter too much if we actually get some of this mangos purple on top of that volupus pink or indeed on top of that shayish purple because it's all kind of part of the same shade group And they all kind of work together to create a really cool finished sort of blend on the model. And with that Magos purple applied, don't worry too much about adding any highlights just yet. What we're going to do is we're going to finish off the rest of the base coats. And the first color we're going to use is Basilicanum Grey. We're going to use this on all the little stones that are dotted around. The miniature.
And next up, we're going to once again use some Shayish purple. And what we're going to use this for is for all of the kind of flowers and things, but just the kind of central part of them. We don't want to do this all over the leaves. We just want to get this Shayish purple on the kind of, well, I guess you'd almost call them the fanged bits. And I don't know what it's called in terms of plants. The bit where all the seeds would go. On a sunflower, for example. Just want to use little bits like this. There's one there. And there's one just in here. And next up, we're going to once again use a little bit of wildwood. And this is going to be for the inside of the snapping jawed plant down here. I'm assuming it's a snapping jawed plant. It doesn't look like it's very friendly, as you would expect from a, the deadly flora and fungi of Catachan itself. And next up, we're going to use some skeleton hoard, and this is going to be for the, both those skulls that we can see on the miniature's base. We've got one down here. Like that. And we've got the other one back here. And with all of those details now painted in, what we're going to do is we're going to do all of the greenery. Now, the colours that we're going to be using are Orc Flesh, Crude Camo and Minotaurum Green. Now, there's no exact science to doing this. So what we want to do is basically just kind of use them at our discretion. So I'm actually going to start with Minotaurum Green and I'm going to use this all over this large plant here like this. I'm just going to get this coated all over this guy like this just being fairly indiscriminate with where it goes just wanting to get it all on there and covered up I am just avoiding that little plant just in there I don't want that to be the same colour. Like that. Lovely stuff. And once again, just going to continue using this Militarum Green along the back of each of those large leaves. Like this. Anyway, with that Militarum Green applied, I will finish the rest of them. But what I want to do is I want to grab a bit of Creed Camo and I'm going to start painting it on the leaves underneath here. Like that, to give us a bit of variation in this plant. And then I'm also going to add a bit of this Creed Camo over the top of this Militarum Green. And every time I do this, I am, of course, going to wash my brush because I don't want to contaminate any of my pots. Like that. Not being super careful about where it goes, just slapping it on there. So we want these paints to basically interact with each other like they're doing there. And grab a little bit more Militarum, Militarum Green. And now I'm just going to add this on top of that Creed Camo that I've just done there on the base giving us a little bit of a difference. Similarly, I'm also going to use some orc flesh. And I'm going to use this down here, for example, on this leaf, and this long kind of junglish plant, like that. And again, I'm going to wash my brush. I think for this I'm going to add some militarum green over the top of that, just to give it some different 
colours in and amongst it. Like that. So you just want to go around finishing all of these bits of foliage like this. It's really up to you what combinations or what order do you do them in. And with all of that green applied, what we're now going to do is going to take some skeleton hoard once again. I'm just going to use it to colour in this little doodad down here. Like that. And next up, we want to use a little bit of Black Templar, not very much, just a small amount like that. We want to use this for the device just poking out of the skull's eye. Like that. Just a teeny tiny little bit more. Like that. And next up, before we start doing any highlights, we want to just make sure that the rim of the base is finished. So we're going to take a small amount of Sterling Battlemire, and we're just going to start using this to effectively plaster in the gap between the sculpted base and the bit that hasn't got any detail. Because if you just leave it, I know I've covered it wildwood, but if you just leave it, you can see that seam, it's a bit ugly. So we're just using this like this, just to colour in and fill in any of that negative space. And with that Sterling Battlemire applied, it's now time to add some highlights to that base. So the first colour we're going to use is Nurgling Green. And we're going to want to use this on any areas that are quite pale. So in this case, I've done this guy using some Creed Camo. So we want to use the Nurgling Green like this, just to highlight the sharp edges. We're also going to use whatever green, like this. That doesn't make any sense. We're also going to be using the Nurgling Green to highlight the little suckers and things on this large plant here. Like this. Like that. And just want to go around using this on any areas that are really pale. Like that. And next up we're going to use some Fulgrim Pink. And this is going to be just to highlight any of those Magos purpley areas. We just want to add this really just to the tips into the sharpest areas on these tentacles down here. Like this. You don't want to use it on that volupus pink. I was going to say screamer pink, it's not screamer pink. But what we also want to do is we want to use this fulgrim pink to just pick out the tips of those flowers that we originally coated with shayish purple, like this. Like that. What you can also do, if you really want to, you can add a little bit of a foreground pink highlight to the sharp areas on the camera pace. But you absolutely don't have to. It looks pretty good as it is with just that shade purple over the top. And with that foreground pink applied, what we want to do is we want to take some Emperor's Children. We're going to use this to highlight the areas that we originally did with Volupus Pink, so these little claws. Like this. And with that, all that remains to do is to give that base a light dry brush of Tyrant Skull, just to give all of that soil those skulls 
and the plants a little bit of a highlight as well as it, I should say those uh, little basilicanum grey rocks that we did. We just want to lightly catch all of these areas and just be very gentle when it comes to the plants themselves. So you don't want like really kind of bright, gross highlights. <laughs> It's the best way of saying it. This tyrant sculpt just pulls all of it together. You can even just catch the edges of the back of that dead gribbly. Just being careful. And with that tyrant skull applied, all that's left to do is to finish off the rim of the base. And the colour I'm going to be using is some thinned down Steel Legion Drab. But of course, you can do this whatever your colour you like. And with the rim of the base complete, Sergeant Ripper Jackson is now finished. What a model, right? I mean, if this is potentially an indication of new Catachans, I think we're all gonna, well, we're all gonna be a bit poorer, aren't we? I mean, I just, I, I love it. There's so much character in it and it's beautiful, beautiful miniature and it's wonderful to, just wonderful to paint. And I think the color scheme really works. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to support me further, like these legends on the screen, you can do so. Head to patreon.com forward slash warhipster or go to ko-fi.com forward slash warhipster. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Do all that good stuff. And if you want to be kept up to date, make sure to click the bell icon. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.